Okay, everybody, I want to make a, a, a video on uh, a local uh, sculptural topic, and this is mainly for people who live in the state of Maryland, uh, in the USA, where I live and where I was born, and um, I had my artistic training here. I've established a studio here. So I, I've always been a Marylander, um, you know, from birth. Um, I'm not like, you know, uh, necessarily like a Maryland pride person or um, uh, I don't, you know, subscribe to any, any sort of group here, but, uh, but any, regardless, you know, for better or worse, I'm from Maryland and there was a local um, RFP put out, a request for proposal for a monumental sculpture uh, in the city of Annapolis, which is our capital city. And there's a traffic circle there where they, you know, they have a committee that, that is looking for a permanent sculpture, a landmark sculpture, um, to be in the middle of this large traffic circle. And um, so they've been trying to figure out what to put there. And this is, I think, the second, the third um, design I've given them, which was rejected, right? Uh, so I'm making this video um, because I had a lot of Marylanders who were interested in this concept and design, and I wanted it to get out there regardless of whether the city of Annapolis, you know, cares about this or not. Uh, perhaps there's someone else who does. So, so I thought I'd just give you a um, kind of a little um, history lesson. I'm not a historian, but I like history. And uh, in trying to decide on the subject for this sculpture, I ended up doing a little bit of research, um, you know, enough, enough to uh, come up with an idea. So um, my concept for, for, the, for the figure here would be a man named Leonard Calvert and he was the first governor of the colony of Maryland, okay? So we're going way back to like 1630s, 40s. Um, and I really started with the flag. Now this is our Maryland flag here. So it's a unique flag. Most state flags, people don't know what they look like. They really don't care about them and they oftentimes get changed. Um, this one, you know, it's it, it's been our flag from the beginning and it's, it's very um, unique and it's very beloved by people who live here. So if you ever visited Maryland or you live in Maryland, you know, you see this thing everywhere. Like here's a, here's a beer koozie. You'll see these at all of our um, grocery stores, right? Um, this is my buddy's company he works for, Reliable Contracting. So, he, you know, he had a bunch of these. He gave me one and you'll see it on, you'll see it on hats. You see it on small business logos. It's everywhere. Um, so I really started with that flag, you know, just wondering what the heck is that flag? And it looks very European, doesn't it? Um, and that's exactly what it is. It's a, it's a European, um, coat of arms. It's two different families, um, coat of arms, I guess you'd call it. And, um, the, the black and gold is the Calvert family. They were English. And then the, the Roman looking cross that's the Arundels, and they were Irish. So these, you know, uh, Anne Arundel and uh, George Calvert married. I think that I got the names right. And um, uh, George Calvert was called Lord Baltimore. So I think of Baltimore, Maryland, one of our great cities. Not the capital, but, but our biggest city, I think. Um, you know, that, that's, that bears his name. So George Calvert was given the charter to um, establish a colony in part of what was then Virginia, um, and it would be a, a feudal proprietorship, meaning that, that the lords would, would own great, you know, uh, plots of land, and they would, they would also um, govern the state, the colony. So that's, that's kind of a brief history of, of the, the, um, the beginning of Maryland. And what made it unique was that um, the Calverts and the Arundels were Catholic, and which wouldn't be anything unique really in Europe, except for um, this was during the Reformation. So, um, you know, to be, to be Catholic in England or in the uh, British Isles was pretty much illegal at that time. So it's kind of amazing that, that they were granted a charter to make a colony that would be tolerant of um, obviously Protestants, but also Catholics. And the idea was is they could live together even though the Catholics wanted to run the, the uh, colony, um, that they would, they would, you know, coexist in peace. 
And um, one thing I, I, um, I found out during this process was there was a, you know, the first of its kind of religious, let's see, Toleration of Religion Act. I think it was like 1650, maybe. Um, and it was the first act of its kind passed into law, um, you know, in the colonies. So, so I thought that was quite interesting. And really we're talking about Church of England, some Catholics and uh, Puritan types, which I'm not sure the exact name for all these people, but, but apparently the Puritans were, were very fervent and uh, sometimes violent, you know, about, you know, they would burn churches and all kinds of stuff. So, so this was a little bit uh, revolutionary at the time. And um, it doesn't matter that they were Catholic so much, but uh, the idea I think is evergreen because it, it, um, it sort of paved the way for our, our cherished First Amendment, you know, like religious, of, religious freedom within, uh, within America. And you get the idea, you know, it kind of was the beginning of this idea of, uh, of the First Amendment. Um, I think that the, the Toleration of Religion Act was overturned later or something. It didn't, it, it didn't all last, but, um, but anyway, you, you, I think you get my point. And um, what I wanted to, uh, to say about this is, is this figure is um, George Calvert's son, supposed to be, it's an idea. Remember, this is all kind of romanticized. Uh, Leonard Calvert, who was the first governor of the state of Maryland, or the uh, colony of Maryland, I should say. And I put the date here, 1634. Um, I guess that was uh, the establishment of the colony, the date. So we're really coming up on a 400 year anniversary of the state of Maryland, um, or the colony of Maryland, which I think is, is pretty amazing. Uh, but anyway, the, um, the committee in Annapolis, you know, they didn't want to touch this idea. Uh, I kind of expected that, to be honest. Um, I think all these committees today, they're so terrified of choosing anything that's specific, you know, anything that's a male or anything that um, has to do with history. So like it or not, this is part of our history. Uh, I think it's the role of, of the sculptor, the public sculptor, to, to um, you know, be somewhat accurate with, with the subject matter, but also romanticize and idealize um, the figure. Um, and that's, you know, that, that's a way to allow more people to engage in the art, right? So it, it allows your imagination to, um, to kind of take off. And, you know, do you really have to know what this figure, who this figure is at first glance? I don't think you do. Um, but, uh, but then once you do find out, it's kind of interesting, I think. So a lot of times we'll see monuments around the country and, and we just go, oh yeah, there's that guy. We might even come up with a name for, for him or her um, or driving with our kids. They all come up with a name for, for the sculptures. Uh, but then as you get older, you kind of learn, oh yeah, that's, that is this character or this, you know, this represents a, uh, let's say a virtue or a theme, you know. Um, so anyway, this is um, supposed to be Leonard Calvert and he's holding the Maryland flag. Okay, I've just kind of used some, some drapery and clay. And um, I, I wanted to make him like a, um, like, like a ship captain coming off a ship. So a lot of times he's portrayed, um, you know, in his finest, um, you know, Jacobian uh, kind of frilly stuff, which I, I don't really aesthetically find interesting, but, um, or relatable is maybe a better word. So I made him kind of a little more rustic. He's got the Maryland flag. Um, you know, no, nothing fancy, real casual. He's probably, you know, he came on a ship called the Ark, which was a big ship. And they had a smaller ship called the Dove. Maybe you've heard of this if you live in Maryland. The Dove was the smaller ship that was left behind. And they used this vessel to go up and down the Chesapeake to explore and, um, you know, make contact with the settlers there and also the Native Americans who were there. So that's the symbolism of this Dove. He's holding out a Dove. You know, the dove is um, traditionally also a, a sign of, of peace and, um, and unity um, in, in, uh, in Christianity. It's the symbol of the Holy Spirit. So I think, I think it has a lot of, um, you know, broad appeal. And um, uh, this pose, you know, not, not to get too nerdy, but this pose is somewhat based on 
uh, Udon's John the Baptist, which you may have seen in, in your art classrooms, it, it's a figure with the man with the outstretched arm. So, so I think that is a, also a cool connection. Uh, Udon also sculpted George Washington and uh, Ben Franklin, and I think Thomas Jefferson. So he has a connection to the founding of America. And again, I'm sort of giving a little nod for him here. So um, I just wanted to put this video out there and you know, if, if um, your, your Maryland city or town is interested, um, you know, I know St. Mary's County City, that's where they landed and lived first. Uh, St. Clemens Island, I think it's called. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of this family's history is all over our state. You know, I live in Anne Arundel County, which is where Annapolis is. I'm in Southern Anne Arundel County. Next to me is Calvert County. That's where my kids go to school. And so I drive five miles south. I'm in Calvert County. Um, I guess there's, uh, what, Cecil County. Cecil was, was um, Leonard's brother, right? And uh, there's more, there's you know, like Leonard Town and um, there's probably more I'm, I'm blanking on. But, uh, but anyway, the, the Maryland's name, flag, their county names, their city names, all kind of relate to this, um, you know, 17th century um, foundation. And, um, you know, you can deny it. You can, you can pretend it's, it didn't happen that way, but it did. And this flag that everyone's so obsessed with that's where it comes from. So, and you know, full disclosure, um, I happen to be Catholic, but I'm not, I don't have a ton of pride in like being from Maryland. I just happen to be here. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a beautiful state uh, as far as its natural uh, beauty. It's got the Chesapeake Bay, seafood, um, you know, but I'm not like, I'm not saying I'll always live in Maryland. Um, it's got a lot of problems uh, politically. It's a very strange, place to try to do business or, you know, pay your taxes. But um, anyway, here's my offering as a Maryland born and raised sculptor, painter, um, went to St. Mary's grade school, high school for 13 years. I was trained at Maryland Hall, uh, which was the old Naples High School. I taught at Maryland Hall for six or seven years. Um, now I have my studio down in Galesville, which is just south of Annapolis. So anyway, I'm throwing uh, Leonard Calvert out there. Um, if anyone's interested, you can whack a comment below. Um, and uh, thanks for your consideration. And the next time you see the Maryland flag, maybe you'll know a little bit more about where it comes from. All right, take care.